Today's episode is sponsored by Rover. Click thumbs up for Pancake the Corgi Puppy, subscribe to my channel, and get a copy of my book, now available in German. <laughs> Pancakes are supposed to be sweet. Once you've taught your dog the basics, you'll want to know where to go from there. Today, we're going to go over how to phase in intermediate level training with your dog. Really? Dogs require lots of mental and physical stimulation to really be content. I mean, obviously, right? But often that's easier said than done. Fortunately, there's a great new way to solve this. Rover is an app and a website that lets you quickly find and book five-star pet sitters and dog walkers. The app gets a 4.9 star rating on the app store, so obviously people are really loving the Rover app. And you're gonna find that it's really user-friendly. I think that's why it's so popular. There are so many real services available here at your fingertips. Okay, let's take dog walking, for example. Right away, you can see how many stars someone has and their price per walk in this case. Catherine's got 14 reviews. She charges $15 per walk. And you can see a full list of Catherine's skills here. And the reviews on Rover are verified reviews. That way you can feel really good about finding someone that you trust. Meet and greets with potential caretakers are completely free and you can do as many of them as you want. Once you find someone that you trust, they'll send you photos and detailed updates about how your dog's day is going. How about doggy daycare in someone's home? Let's check that one out. So it looks like between 20 and 30 $30 a day, you can have someone take care of your dog for an entire day. For $25 off your first booking, visit rover.com slash Zach George and enter promo code Zach George. I'll have that link in the description. Once your dog has learned a few of the basics like sit, lie down, maybe stay for a short period of time, it's so easy to fall into that trap of remaining content and just stopping there. But if you want a really well-behaved dog for life, you're gonna have to go a bit further. So in general, there's three types of training sessions. You've got primary training sessions, surprise primary training sessions, and secondary training sessions. Up to this point, you've probably been doing mostly primary training sessions. That's where you're really focused on your dog, teaching them something new. So once your dog is starting to get the idea of what you want, it's so important to reinforce that training with what I like to call surprise primary training sessions. Those are where you plan a training session, but you do your best to surprise your dog so that you mimic real life distractions. These types of training sessions are the ones that really help your dog make quick, real world decisions. Right now, Pancake's really enjoying his bone. The last thing he's thinking about is doing basic obedience training. Let me see if I can get Pancake to come to me, even though he's chewing on that bone and he's really interested in that. Come on, let's go, Pancake, let's go. Okay, see, it's not that easy to get your dog to listen to you in the face of something that they're distracted by. Okay, you can bring your bone with you, that's fine, that'll work. Come here, come on, Pancake, I got a treat, come on. Little tough, come on. Yes, good, I'm gonna go ahead and jackpot that right there. That was really good, I love that. The point that I really want you to get here is normally what most people do is they'll focus on those primary training sessions where they're teaching their dog something new inside their living room, and then they assume that when they go in public, their dog is going to draw on that training to just listen to you. But actually, this is the missing link right here. You have to set up these surprise training sessions so that your dog is accustomed to listening to you in this distracted state of mind. See, these training sessions are more challenging to your dog because they're not expecting them. That's key. If you wait for a real life distraction to emerge when neither you nor your dog are expecting it, you won't get great results. Pancake, come here, come here, come here. Yes, good job. We're starting to see frequent improvement here. My goal is to see if I can get Pancake to just come to me when I call him one time without having to beg him to come. Pancake, come on. Yes, really good job. Now you'll remember that secondary training sessions are where you and your dog are caught off guard. Maybe a surprise knock at the door or your dog starts lunging towards a squirrel on a walk. It's important to snap into training mode during those secondary training sessions. So you'll have to work on getting extra sharp there, but you'll find that secondary training sessions are so much easier once you put in time with these surprise training sessions that we've covered so far. So Pancake is going through a puppy biting issue right now. And so if I'm picking him up, I'm not really anticipating a training session right now, but I'm gonna focus on, let's do a desensitizing training session with him. I'm letting him nibble on these treats in my hand right now. And I'm gonna focus on kind of touching him real firmly just so he gets used to being touched. This is the kind of in the moment training you have to do when you have a puppy. You don't always get to determine when a training session starts. And that's the whole point of a secondary training session. Next, teach your dog to listen to you no matter how you ask them to do it. This should be interesting. Now, one of the ways I like to evaluate how strong the training is between a person and their dog is by having the person tell their dog to lie down. And what I'm looking for is, do they have to have their dog lie down by touching the ground like that? Okay, don't bite me, please. Or can they stand up like this 
and just tell their dog, lie down. Let's find out with Pancake. Lie down. <laughs> okay, so we have some work to do to get Pancake to lie down when I ask him to, if I want to stand completely up. You likely taught your dog how to lie down by doing something like this, just luring them into a down like that. And if you're like a lot of people, you might have even stopped there. But maybe you've worked up to the next level, which is being able to have your, <laughs> which is being able to have your dog lie down by touching the ground. Okay, I'll take that. Really good. So that's excellent. I know that Pancake's mom has taught him how to lie down with a hand signal like this. I'm gonna see if we can evolve the hand signal to the final product. In other words, with me standing up, without me having to be right here, six inches away from him. I mean, being six inches away from you is an occupational hazard, man. Lie down? Not quite there, but let me see if he'll lie down. Hey, Pancake, lie down. Hey, pretty good. He's used to the hand being lower below his eye line. See that? So it's weird for him when the hand's up here to be like, what? What does that mean? Down? Still a little confusing. Let me go ahead and make it easier. Down? Yes, good job. Throughout this training, I'm periodically taking a step back to try and find the line where the communication is reliable. That's normal. I mean, it's a delicate process sometimes. Whenever you hit a roadblock, it usually means that you're taking steps that are too big. That's Down. your cue to take a step back on your training and make things a little bit easier for your dog. You can't take very big steps though because you have little legs. <laughs> Down. Okay, good. So we're really stuck right about here. You'll find that sometimes you get stuck at these little points where you have to focus on down. tiny incremental success. Pancake, okay, okay. down. Oh yes, good boy, really good. I'm giving him a jackpot reward. Uh, don't confuse jackpot rewards with giving your dog a whole bunch of treats, but rather you're giving them a whole bunch of tiny treats to really let him know, whoa, that really just opened up the floodgates of treats. The ultimate test will be to see if we can get him to lie down while I'm standing completely straight up like this. Yes, good. And I think he thinks down means bark twice and then lie down, but I'll still take it because he's learning. Down. Yes, good job. So much quicker that time. He's doing great. Next, place a strong emphasis on training outside. See, before it's realistic for your dog to listen to you on a walk or in public, they have to be really solid outside. Many of you will know from experience that at first your dog listens to you way less reliably outdoors. And it's no wonder because those smells, sights, and sounds are highly stimulating to dogs. In order to get your dog listening to you outside, they must first be desensitized to these things. And that means spending tons of time outdoors until outside is normal. That might mean dedicating five to six hours a week to exposure and just general training outside. If possible, try to focus on just being outside for an hour a day with your dog. If you go to the park on your day off and maybe spend about three hours just focusing on some light, easy training and just letting them experience the outdoors, you ought to notice that after doing this for about a year or so, that your dog really comes to listen to you much more reliably in that type of highly distracting setting. A whole year? Yeah, that's right. It takes time to work with a dog. By setting up surprise training sessions, teaching your dog that you want them to listen to you no matter how you ask them to do something, and by training outside and in public often, you ought to be well into intermediate level training. Click thumbs up for Pancake. He did a good job. And if you need help from time to time, check out our sponsor, Rover. Visit rover.com slash Zach George and enter promo code Zach George to get $25 off your first booking. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Pick up a copy of my book too. We'll see you guys in the next video. Good job, Pancake. You rock. Whoa. <laughs>